so i need to tell you something everyone i mean everyone is giving you the exact same career advice right now go to ai follow your passions but nobody is actually showing you the data behind it all of that is just repeating what worked actually five years ago and assuming that all of that is true right now as well so i did something different i decided that i'm not gonna be following the masses when i come to the us i spent the last five years tracking actual hiring trends looking at real job postings and analyzing what companies are actually doing not what they're saying they're doing and all of this because initially i wanted to get an internship when i was in my masters and then after that i wanted to search for a full-time job in a bad job market and even now you know for my juniors and a lot of friends that are still in the job market and what i found is not what everybody's talking about the world economics for just dropped this report and it is brutal it says 40 percent approximately half of the skills that are prevalent right now will become obsolete by 2030 that is hard and to be honest if you read the report it is not that random there is actually a pattern here a sort of pyramid that explains exactly what sort of jobs are going to get automated and what are the ones that are going to make you rich and once you see this pattern you cannot unsee it it will change everything about how you think about your career so stick with me for the next few minutes because i'm going to tell you exactly what skills to not pick up exactly what skills to not learn in 2025 and beyond also if you're new here i'm anudeep and i work as a software engineer by today and on this youtube channel i make content on tech ai entrepreneurship and self-improvement so if any of those things sound interesting please consider subscribing enough of the plug let's get started okay so let's start with the biggest lie in career advice right now coding for the past decade it's been learn to code, learn to code, learn to code. Your uncle at Thanksgiving or your uncle at Diwali, from where I come from, would tell you to get into tech, work in these big tech companies and to make the big bucks. Boot camps were charging 15 grand and beyond, and I'm talking in dollars, promising that you land a job in six months. And to be honest, all of that was true for the majority of the past decade. If somebody knew even some basic coding, they were golden because they could get an entry into tech or software engineering, and then they could build their career from there. Unfortunately, all that is not true right now. I think most of the people watching this channel have had access to or at least have seen in action tools like GitHub Copilot and Claude Code and GPT and all those things. Developers are using these tools to complete their tasks 55% faster. And believe me, this is not a small improvement. Think about what it means for the company. Why would they even hire a junior developer and pay him 60-70 grand a year and some perks and benefits and health insurance and also grant them sick leaves when they can pay $20, $100, maybe you know $500 a year for an AI agent that works faster, never takes sick leaves and doesn't even need a coffee break. I've been tracking entry-level job positions and honestly, they're all disappearing. And not slowly, very fast. Companies are slowly eliminating these positions because they don't need it anymore. Obviously, more better positions are being made, but that is not the point of this video. The point of this video is to make you aware of the skills that you don't want to learn and basic programming is one of them. So, if you're just learning to code, just getting the bare essentials in, maybe you know you have some basic skills and you have some basic applications in 2025, you are training yourself to be replaceable. The only coding jobs that will remain are the ones that will require system design, architecture, critical thinking, strategic thinking, all those sorts of things. The exact stuff that they don't teach in these boot camps. This is the kind of stuff that you can learn only and only if you're building and breaking stuff on your own. See, I've made a ton of videos in the past screaming that AI is not taking your job, but I see a lot of people coming to me with that worry and all they know is basic HTML, CSS and JavaScript and all they've made is just a couple of CRUD application projects. Bro, you are getting replaced. Now, you might be thinking, hey, so if AI is taking over my job, let me learn prompt engineering. After all, it is the hot skill of 2024 and well into 2025, right? Well, not really. Nearly 2.3 million people learned prompt engineering last year. That is six people every minute learning prompt engineering, the exact same skill. It is very similar to how everybody decided to be a typewriter in 1995 or something. So while everybody is learning how to write these elaborate prompts to get AI to give you the precise answer, AI is getting smarter day by day and needs less handholding. I still remember, you know, prompting AI with two vaguely different prompts and getting two different answers. But now I can just, you know, talk to it like a human being and it will sort of give a very predictable answer based on what I've asked it. Him or it. Oh my god, I'm treating AI hey, like a person. So what I mean to say is prompt engineering is becoming like basic computer literacy. It's like knowing how you use a mouse or a keyboard. You should know it. 
but nobody's gonna pay you extra for that. So if your entire value proposition is that you're good at talking to AI or forming AI systems and stuff, you, my friend, are in trouble. Because in six months, AI won't even need any special instruction. It'll just, you know, understand. So prompt engineer by itself is nothing. Prompt engineering paired with some other domain knowledge like, you know, bioinformatics or mechanical engineering or software engineering or anything becomes a superpower. Instead of leaving your job and becoming a prompt engineer, try to become better at your job and learn some basic prompting. Data analysis. This is one that absolutely gets me fired up. There are people saying that, hey, data analysis is not going anywhere because data is everywhere. Every company needs data. Data is needed to train these AI models to, you know, make better predictions. Data is needed for the software companies as well. And there are programs in these universities who are just, you know, milking data analysts and data scientists every year. But watch this. I'm going to upload this messy data set in Cloud or any LLM. I mean, I use Cloud because I'm a developer. If you're a developer, I highly recommend Cloud. It comes with Cloud Code if you're paying for the premium. All also, for writers, cloud is recommended, but you know, there are obviously general purpose to tools like GPT and you know, maybe Gemini and stuff. So feel free to, you know, choose your own poison or superpower, whatever. But yeah, this is a basic prompt that I'm giving it. Uh, and obviously, as I said, you can go very overboard with prompting, but this is what it is. I have just downloaded some messy data set from Kaggle and I'm gonna, you know, ask it to identify patterns, create visualizations and stuff like that. Say send and we are gonna wait for a few seconds, if not minutes. I don't know. Okay. So it's generating where it goes. All right, we're gonna wait and we're gonna be right back. Okay, so that took some time. That took some effort. And by effort, I mean five minutes. I mean, that is the standard that these LLMs have set that even spending five minutes to process a complex data set that I personally would have taken two full days to process is hard work. But this is the bond that I'm trying to make. I mean, doing all these computations and stuff maybe might have taken one day for me. But, you know, building a proper dashboard for me to present to my boss or to my class and stuff. I mean, all of this would have taken me, I mean, one extra day. All of this can be done in two minutes or five in this case, because, you know, we had to fix some stuff. Maybe this is a bigger data set. I just searched for the hardest, most complex data set on Kaggle. And this is the one that popped up. And, you know, that's what I'm showing you right now. But you get the point. All it took was five minutes to clean data, process it, form visualizations, form patterns, find connections, all those things. And it is not making mistakes. It is not missing those obvious observations. It is not missing the outliers. If you are a data analyst who's watching this and is scared, I have said it in the past and that is the same thing that I'm going to say to you right now. Your job is not in danger. But if all you do is all of this, then you are open. Obviously there are and there have to be different, more better parts to your job. Things which will never be done by AI. And I'm talking about data analysis that is not data analysis. It is now all about asking the right business questions, bringing value to businesses in the form of your decision making. Understanding the context that only numbers cannot tell you. Making those strategic decisions based on your insight. So the role of a data analyst or a junior data analyst will evolve. It's not going to be this because all of this can be done by AI. So a junior analyst will be using AI to, you know, do so much more and that will accelerate the course of innovation. Content writing used to be a creative safe heaven. I mean, I write a newsletter. I mean, I know a lot about writing. I've been, you know, running sort of a small Instagram page, which didn't get much traction. I have recently resumed my, my newsletter. By the way, link in the description if you want to follow me for that. But there used to be a saying like, AI can crunch numbers, but it cannot be creative. It can't capture the human voice. Well, that aged badly. All I'm looking nowadays is AI-generated blog post, AI-generated content, AI-generated email marketing campaign. And honestly, all of that is better than what humans reduced. More consistent, better SEOs, no mistakes. And the rate of freelance content writers is falling so low because content mills are replacing humans with AI. And writing online for a while now, there's something that I have also realized. Most content writing was never really creative. It always followed a fixed template. Write a blog post about X, use these keywords, make it engaging, stuff like that. And AI is incredibly good at finding patterns and formulas. Actually, this is literally what it does. So if you're writing generic blog posts, generic social media content, standard email campaigns, you are competing with a machine that produces better stuff than you and works 24 seven, never needs any breaks. And the only writing that survives and will survive for eternity is something that has genuine insight, which is filled with personal experience and human insight, stuff that is not commoditized. Everything else? Or it's just content generation. Hence, content is not king. Contextual content is the real king. 
Let me talk about crypto skills. Oh man, that is real painful, but I have to address that. In 2021, everybody was building NFTs. They were into blockchain development, NFTs, crypto, whatever, crypto trading, I don't know. People were literally quitting their day jobs to do all this stuff. But if you go to any NFT marketplace right now, just look at them. NFTs that people pay thousands of dollars to create are worth literally nothing right now. Only some areas of blockchain development still has scope and will continue to have scope. But actually, the number of blockchain developers jobs have also reduced by approximately 80 to 90 percent from the last three years all these crypto influencers are quietly fine-tuning their linkedin profiles as well and one of the most important lessons from this crypto hype thing that i took and i want to impart in this video is hype does not equal lasting value just because something is trending and making money right now doesn't mean you should learn that skill and it will continue to pay you dividends further down the line. Most crypto skills weren't actually skills at all. They were just speculations dressed up as expertise. People were not creating a value. They were riding a wave. The crypto wave as they say. But real skills create value regardless of market condition. They solve actual problems for real people. And that is exactly what we need to focus on. Okay, so if all these skills are becoming irrelevant, what the hell are we supposed to do? I know this feels depressing. You might think, great, whatever I am doing right now is useless, so I might as well, you know, just stay at home and do nothing, right? But here is what I discovered while researching all of this, and this is where it gets really exciting. While everybody is fighting over basic skills that AI can do, hardly anyone, I mean, I see a few people on in tech Twitter, which is now X, developing the hard skills, the high-level skills that only humans can do. There is a massive, massive opportunity gap opening up, and if you notice, even in the skills that I've mentioned, all of them require a basic level of cognitive thinking. So, all you need to do is start applying that brain of yours a little bit more. I'm talking about strategic thinking, system design, leadership, complex problem solving. All these, as you might have guessed by now, are meta-learning skills. They require human judgment, context, creativity. And no matter how big the context window of Gemini is, it is not quite and will never quite be as good as human judgment. Even if the intelligence of AI surpasses human intelligence and we reach AGI or ASI, it will never be human intelligence. Anyway, if you look at the salary differences, basic skills, people pay somewhere around 40 to 50 grand and these high level skills going above 200 grand, the gap is only widening. And because the AI automates the bottom of the pyramid, all the value goes up to the car. Companies still need and will always need humans, but they need humans who can do the work which AI cannot. And no matter how smart AI gets, there will always be things that make us human. The more human you are, the more higher up in the pyramid you are, and the more you are earning. And these aren't skills that you can learn in a six-week bootcamp. You cannot memorize your way to strategic thinking. You cannot follow a tutorial to develop leadership skills, if you know what I mean. They take time to develop. That is exactly why they are valuable. And hence, that is why so few people have them. And if you are somebody young watching this, somebody who is, you know, less than the age of 25, who has their whole life ahead of them, try to do more. Try to experiment more. As I mentioned, make stuff. Break stuff. Make it again. Build new stuff. Tinker. Tinker with all these different technologies think of it, all the different types of things that are happening in this world and you know grow your context grow the understanding of what you could do and document all your learnings on github or medium or whatever platform your industry uses learn to network with people show off your work learn to give value to people because money will always come to those who are valuable to any company or any person or any organization and obviously all of these things will take time and energy and effort and resources and stuff like that so be prepared work hard bro everybody's working for the quick fix everybody's looking for the shortcut a shortcut is a longer way as they say i know this is a lot to process maybe you are feeling overwhelmed or maybe even angry i mean who the hell invented ai and maybe you are halfway through a coding boot camp or a degree that does not make sense but here is the thing and I need you to hear this. The job market doesn't care and will never care about your feelings. It goes on with or without you. It doesn't care how much you're already invested in learning the wrong skills. Every day you spend learning the basic skills is a day you're not moving up the pyramid. So stop learning them. Think about problems, not only solutions. Start developing your ability to think, your ability to spot patterns, and your leadership skills. It is never too late to start something new. I pivoted so late in my career, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that it is possible I hope you found this meaningful and I hope you have a great week. I will see you guys in the next one.